Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun. I have a special treat today. We yep. have Barb Avery, former uh, uh, current, path. current Land Academy member. <laughs> And uh, a career path career alumni. Path alumni, perfect. <laughs> exactly. Barb, how are you today? I am doing great. I am excited to be here. Uh, I was actually surprised to get your invitation, um, oh. but I'm just super excited to be here. And I hope you'll ask me back after today. <laughs> oh, I have to. Uh, I have to tell you, you were just uh, a treat to have as a, a career path member. You mm -hmm. really, you brought a lot of life to the. To the you know. Buying and selling land can be pretty boring, <laughs> and that's the opposite of you. So, exactly. and, and we're twice as lucky to get you now, even uh, on the show. Thank you. I, I, I yeah. really had a great time, and I can't wait to talk to you about my experience in Career Path. Cool. Excellent. Well, let's start with that. Oh, How yeah. did you find Career Path? All right, uh, that's a great question. So, it started off with I had uh, discovered flipping land. Well, uh, even before that. Um, I've been involved in real estate on and off since the eighties and we've had rental properties. We've been landlords, you know, we've had all kinds of different things. Um, and the only thing I have been really exposed to was the style of land investing where you're, um, not buying the property, but doing double closes. And I really wasn't comfortable with that because I, I wanted to do things at my pace, my own way. So it so happened that um, I had been looking up, I think it was uh, data tree and scraping and I'm probably, I, I make up words, um, but it was one of those things. I know I speak barbellish, excuse me. <laughs> if I can't find the right word, I will make it up. Um, so I probably, believe in that. I was on Google and... Um, I think it was a couple of either your podcasts or how to do this, how to do that. I'm not really sure um, how that all came about. But then I discovered you guys. And oh, my gosh. You re First of all, you reminded me of my husband and I, the bantering back and mm. forth. We had an interior design business in the 80s and 90s. And people would actually stay home because they were entertained with our bantering back and forth as we hung yeah, yeah. and did all their different things. So you guys, I fell in love with you guys, plus your heart. You were so transparent in everything that you did and how you explain things. And um, that really attracted me because I am all about, you know, integrity and, and high character, things like that. Um, so I just fell in love with all that. So um, I started listening to the show, shared it with my husband and uh, listening to the podcast. I was driving three hours in each direction. My husband was working out of town. <laughs> Um, for the past four and a half years, that's a whole nother story and we won't go there. Um, and I had a lot of time to catch up on all the different podcasts and found out there was this thing called career path. Now my background, I've been, uh, self-employed for 35 years and I do know that career path attracted me because it was access. I would have access to you guys for mm -hmm. at least two, three hours a week any questions, anything I wanted to, to ask. And for me, that was more valuable as, as far as the, the transaction of what it would cost. Because in my background, I've had leases, I've bought franchises, I've paid $1,000 a month for interior design samples, um, all the different things that I've done. This to me was an investment in myself, but also to get started and eliminate my learning curve. And so mm -hmm. that's why, and that's how I founded uh, the career path. Um, it hit all the check marks. And I knew that to be able to spend that kind of time with you guys on a weekly basis, it would really jumpstart uh, the program for us instead of, oh my gosh, you know, well, you already know, I, I have not learned Excel, just so you know. <laughs> Until she likes us. I know. That's a <laughs> She's in the minority. Oh, <laughs> guys, you guys, I, yeah, I, our kids feel differently. Yeah. <laughs> so does it yeah, don't ask our kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so you have uh, some great stories I know from Career Path about um, makeup. Can you tell us about <laughs> non -makeup. that? Non-makeup. So, 
<laughs> um, let's see. That was the reinvention. Um, I've been interior designer and then I bought some franchises. My, my poor husband, we'll call him St. Barry. Cause you know, I'll come, I'll, I'll, he'll leave for the day. I've got a green Jeep Cherokee in the driveway. He'll come home. I'll have a purple minivan. Um, he, <laughs> 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 well, I needed, I needed more room. I was running my interior design business. So, um, he I left for that. Texas to go help a family member and he came home and I had bought two franchises on the internet and we were moving to Florida. Um, so he's oh, always wow. home is, to a surprise. Um, exactly like Joe and I. Yeah. And I'm the idiot who does that yeah. stuff. He just showed me an <laughs> office building before we sat down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Yep. My hair is not here. <laughs> Never a dull moment with Barb. That's what we're going to title this. That's why we wanted to have you on the show. Oh, my uh -huh. gosh. And now everybody's going to hear it. And so <laughs> we'll send them a berry and they'll be like, okay. Um, so uh, as far as that goes, um, my franchises in 2008, we were sailing along doing a great thing. And uh, the makeup thing came in because um, in 2007, the, the economy in Florida was faltering and we had 6,000 foreclosures. Mm -hmm. And we went from food truck or all these various businesses that we could start. And it came down to, well, I've got $10 and Avon costs $10 to get started. And I know I can't show anybody how to wear makeup. Uh, I wore makeup for you today because I didn't want to frighten anybody. But normally I'm a tomboy. <laughs> I was a middle-aged, chunky person that started an Avon business. And um, new people would need deodorant and shampoo. So mm -hmm. um, you don't start at zero in a business like that. You've got all your years of accumulated experience and different things that you've learned. So I simply templated that onto uh, what I learned um, in the past onto what I needed to do. and the. The day after I joined, um, they said, well, there, there's a district sales meeting in, in the area. So I drove an hour and a half to that and found out somebody in the Tampa area was doing $15 million in sales in Avon. So I said, okay. So I went home, read the policies, procedures, and I proceeded to draw out the where I needed to be in that business in one year because I had one year left of savings before we went bankrupt because of the economy was so bad. So I go to the local little meeting and I unfurl this 15 pages of stuff pa pasted together. And they're like, what is that? And I said, well, it's my path to go from here to, and it was called senior executive unit leader here to senior executive unit leader with all these little circles and arrows and how to get from here to there. They had never seen that. And I said, well, I, I apparently not because you don't have any other senior executives in your area right here. So I'm going to be your first one. Uh, long story short, out of 600,000 reps uh, that started that year, um, I became number 53 out of 60. There were only 60 at that top wow. level. Jeez. In one year, I... I did that the second year. We did over $3 million in Avon sales with our team. And in just a few years, we had 1,500 reps coast to coast. Yes, oh I'm a God. gal who in yeah. the rest area, um, I'm taking an Avon book and I'm shoving it under the door going, oh, if you're bored over there, you can read one of these and my name's on the back. <laughs> That's what you would do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had a goal. I needed to uh, recruit, train uh, people. But I also focused on what they wanted, which they, you know, they needed a $300 car payment to stick in the business or else I'd go to work at Penny's part time. So I learned a lot of different things about myself and applied stuff. And um, it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. So that's my makeup story. <laughs> so, so how are you going to, are you a senior executive VP of land, uh, land acquisition? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, this is the easiest interview I've ever done, by the way. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, there's so many places we can go and there's so many Hagrid moments you're going to have to edit out, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> no, no. So we um, 
Well, when you have your ship tied to other people's products or services, even in my interior design business, um, at the time I could see the handwriting on the wall, my Waverly accounts that I could go down the street and buy fabric for less than what I was paying for at it wholesale. So Mm -hmm. you're, you're tied to some of these different things in Avon. It was the product and the corporate structure, uh, in the program. Um, I had started an entrepreneurial, uh, leadership development. I, I started one day. I, Hey, Barry, I just launched a cruise uh, for leadership and personal development. I have 250 people signed up and I have no idea what I'm doing. How are we going to do this? So in, in six months, we, we put on this cruise. The second year, we had three times as many people signed up. Um, and the crazy thing is, is it was kind of tied to, um, my Avon business. So I had to choose between my Avon business or the cruise because the top people, um, were unaware of exactly what we were doing. So I had to shut that down anyway. Mm. That's just water over the bridge, but it also proves that when, um, you need to reinvent yourself. I'm on Mm 6.0. I just turned 60 and my husband, uh, um, being working from home, um, I needed to replace our income, six figure income. I needed to replace it with something different that wasn't tied to anybody else. Land has been that for me. Uh, it has been, um, a huge, huge thing because, uh, we can zig and zag, economy, um, type of land niche that you want to be in, how fast or how slow. Now in my land business, when I started career path, the timing wasn't right. The timing is never right to start something, but you didn't have a schedule that said, Hey, we're going to have a career path here, here, and here. I didn't know when, or if you were ever going to have another one. So I signed up. And it wasn't the right timing for us, but I showed up every week. I was excited. I asked questions, even though you will find this hard to believe. I don't know if you remember. I didn't do a mailer during the entire 10 weeks because I wasn't in that spot or that space. But we did one soon after and and did several mailers. And the only thing, and I've had actually several people, I need to get a commission for this, that have asked me about my career path experience. Um, And the thing is, is you're going to bloom wherever you're planted in the process. So we've gone back and re-listened. The only thing that um, I was uh, disappointed in for me was that I wasn't in the process to ask better questions, but those questions have been asked on Discord and re-listening to the different things, the group you're with, they've answered those questions that I would have had. So I I asked the questions the best that I knew. Now, fast Mm -hmm. forward, We've done uh, incredibly well because one of my first goals was to build an income stream, have something else we could go to. And and land has been that. It's it's over provided two to three times what we needed for our yearly income. That allowed me to say, hang on a minute, instead of going like a bull in a china closet like I normally do, all you know, fast forward and psh, whatever. Um, we needed to kind of defrag our life. Barry had been gone for four and a half years. We needed to clean up some of that mess. Uh, we have a motorhome sitting in the driveway that needs to get started. We need to come visit you with our dirt bikes. Um, yeah, so do we. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. We have an addition that we want to do on the house. There's just, you know, when your husband's not around for four and a half years, comes home maybe once a month yeah. or a weekend, uh, you don't spend time doing the honeydew list, really. So just right. this has allowed us that time to take that break and to reassess stuff. There's Good. also um, this filled my stop doing list and start doing list. You know, you have a list mm-hmm. that... I used to have it on the wall and be like, well, I really want to sew more. I miss my creativity from my interior design days and and doing this and doing that, but never really had the time or the energy or whatever to do those things. Now uh, I learned like through John Maxwell and stuff that it's your off time that you will solve your problems and become creative. And I never, I always was focused on being productive and checking off stuff and, and that type of thing. So I have Mm -hmm. my start doing and my stop doing. And one of my start doing is to ride my motorcycle, my dirt bike several times Mm -hmm. a week. 
Um, I would be doing that right now, but I decided to be Olga Corbett on a curb um, a couple of weeks ago and pretend it was a balance mm. beam. And I just twisted my knee. It's no big deal. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, um, so I, I, it's going to be a couple more weeks before I'm on my dirt bike, but that's one of the things I wanted to build into my schedule is being able to have time to spend with my son and my husband and around the house and to do things and land has delivered that already. So that's great. now that we have that kind of set up, uh, the next quarter is going to bring us on really ham in this, you know, going full steam ahead because we've been defragging for the past few past few months. This is such an interesting perception because uh, almost always what we talk about in these interviews is how much money are you making, how and you know, but we'll, you're you fit this into your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's such an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, how how many hours a week do you think you spend buying and selling land? Um. Right now, probably 10 to 15. I start Great. off wanting to do 40, 60, 80, you know, whatever. But then I decided, mm -hmm. even though I was starting to put the processes and everything organized, I really needed to set up and fix my environment, my health, mm -hmm. my... Um, my peace of mind and to get yeah, things. Yeah. Because you can't run forward. It, it, it's the land business, like any other business, it's, it's 90% here and it's only 10% mm -hmm. technical. It's the same thing mm -hmm. with Avon, same thing with my interior design coaching, whatever, all the different hats that I've worn. If you don't have your game here, you're not going to win. And right. so, uh, I really needed to reevaluate and, and that type of thing. And like I said, because of your training and what I got from career path and what, you know, the group on discord and stuff is, is I liken it to a mastermind. You want to surround yourself mm -hmm. with people who are like-minded. I don't mean yes, people, Stepford wives. I mean, people who are going right. to give you, these are entrepreneurs, solution oriented people who are going to, if you want to go to Atlanta, it's not just the highway. There's several highways. There's back roads. You can helicopter in. There's all these right. different ways to make it to that same destination. And you can pick like a buffet, all the different ways of how this, like this business can serve you. There's that many right. ideas flowing on there. So this has helped me not only become good at the land business quicker. I am a newbie. I have so much yeah. to learn. But right. because of my experience and because of how you teach and train, and I know career path was a huge thing, being around you guys for three, four hours a week, just having that access is, it is just, it was life changing. I didn't have to poke it with the stick. I could just jump aboard and um, mm -hmm. bloom where I was planted. You know, you're the reason that we did office hours and, and we still do it now to this day <clears throat> and all the career paths and uh, everybody loves it. Mm -hmm. So thank you. It's a fantastic <laughs> thing is to be able to discuss anything because it might have been just a question that you had on the last thing being stuck somewhere. Um, and, and then everybody getting to know each other. Uh, yeah. You know, I had people helping me out with my Excel spreadsheets, um, all kinds of different things. Uh, and I just, I so appreciate that. But in return, I also helped them with maybe some of the things that I brought to the table. Even though I wasn't an expert over here, it could have been like disc, uh, personality stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I think everybody needs to understand that. It's very basic. It's not like the, what's the other thing, the anagram? Not the anagram. A neogram? Yes. That is, uh -huh. That's fantastic. That's very deep. But you need something that in just a few seconds, you can kind of figure out somebody's personality so you can meet them right. and connect with them in their airspace. Because in this land business, yeah. you're not selling uh, aluminum siding to people who have a brick house. You're trying to have right. both a win-win situation. So you want to meet mm -hmm. people where they're at and serve them the best that you can. And if you can understand right. that person, if they're fast talking, if they're um, uh, outgoing, if they're reserved, if they're people oriented, task or you can meet them where they're at and connect with them to serve them better, yep. I think. 
I completely agree. I love that. That's you brought up some great things, and that's one of the things that within Land Academy, and then even deeper within Career Path, when we get it's so nice having, you know, what you bring to the table. You helped someone in the group. You helped us in some ways. Yeah. Everybody yeah. is helping each other. We are constantly. Every session is different yeah. because whoever shows up, they're all different. We have different backgrounds, and we also take away something phenomenal. Every time in the beginning, career path was uh, filled with people who were trying to add a couple zeros to what they were already making, and because of you and several other people, um, career path is now for new people too. Mm -hmm. And so we've broken up. Uh, there's a we call it group A and group B. So the new people are group A, and then the more experienced people are group B, and we have different sessions now, mm -hmm. again, largely because of uh, the experience that you brought to mm -hmm. us and, and what you needed. And, I, so. it's, it, it, and it's not just me, it was other people, even though there were experienced people, sometimes they were new to a certain thing. And we had right. some of the experienced people attending the new stuff. It's almost like you didn't want to miss anything. And yeah. like, for instance, having access to the advanced um, people uh, calls, mm -hmm. That was exciting to me because first of all, I was going to keep pretty much my mouth shut and just listen because I maybe didn't know why or how then, but I knew I could apply it in the future. So it's yeah. so important. And something else that, that you said, I so appreciate, you know, you guys would have every reason to be so... Uh, you just know so much about this. You've been doing it forever, but your, your whole spirit of always being open to learn stuff from somebody, you know, you're, you can always learn something from somebody. It doesn't yeah. matter what they know, but there, there are things that you may don't know or their perspective that you're going to learn. And I think that's what drew me to you is just that whole incredible spirit of you value people. You really value people. If you look at our uh, comments on YouTube and anywhere where the podcast airs, the audio version, it's riddled with comments like this. Will you two please just get to the point? Oh. <laughs> so it's funny that, you know, and then, then there's people like the other half are, are people like you who understand the spirit of all this. And, yeah. and then if we just sit here and t talk about buying and selling land. We're going to have six listeners instead of six the 16 that we have. That brings up a point, right? It's it's the uh, understanding DISC. I learned DISC. Mm -hmm. I was back in uh, Amway and um, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I know you find that hard to believe. But what <laughs> I love about that is we got exposed four times a year to people like Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell. Um, I learned from Dr. Rome. Dar uh, Dr. Rome is R O H M. It's it's personality dash insights, and he does the disc. A lot of people do disc, um, but we learned more in that forty five minute session. And I married my best friend. We were best friends. We worked together uh, in our interior design business. But after we attended that DISC training, we learned more about each other and started applying that. So um, I forgot where I was going with this. Anyway, I knew it was important. But the, the, the different trainings that um, you should be taking are so important to personally grow yourself. So the people right. who are complaining about uh, maybe not you getting to the point, they're probably on the more mm -hmm. um, impatient uh, personality style and so forth. And they don't understand the whole reason to like this, probably go, Barb, you're rambling yeah. on. Well, stories are good <laughs> because they inspire people. Yeah. They're like, oh my gosh, if she can do this and be successful, I can do it. Right? Right. Yep. Exactly. I love it. Well, you know, this brings up another thing too, is I'm glad. I think what's happening right now too, you are inspiring so many women investors. I love that. I am getting more and more comments from new women coming in and finding yeah. us are like, wow, you have a, we're, we're, our little land Academy ladies community is growing. And so and couples too. Uh huh. And couples yeah. too. Yeah. Exactly. And when we started all this, it was, it was, Old middle aged men. That was it. All of it. Old right. middle aged men. <laughs> exactly. I remember, I still, I still remember going to somebody's like, 
like these meetup environments and I'm standing in the back and they're like, oh, you must just be, you're just following this guy around. Yeah. Like, whatever. She's, you don't think I know anything. She's writing in shorthand back there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I like, uh, we have young people, we have older people, yep. we have retired people, we have people changing yeah. careers, we have people who, to me, this is a, um, well, you've got to get over uh, the first hump, which is being an entrepreneur. Not everything is yeah. going to be a bowl of cherries. There's a lot of pits. And if you don't embrace the obstacles, you're never going to learn from them. And you're never going to start living outside your comfort zone. And it's going to remain very small. My husband, yeah. um, I can remember when we first dated, he was very uh, introverted. I thought he was cold and stuck up. No, when I learned DISC, it was just because he was a more reserved person mm -hmm. and i'm not reserved um at all so uh now you can't shut him up because he's learned how to overcome some of these things and how to apply some of these things um anyway so i love that mm, that's me too. so good so we're we're so you're now you're you're on um defragging mode yes is that gonna last a year half a year and yeah, what's what are your plans here I would say probably another couple of weeks. We've been okay. uh, working at this. Um, I, I have a, a few more properties that I'm putting up for sale now. Uh, and as soon as those are just about uh, ready to close, um, then we're really going to go crazy because we've been working through all that other stuff, which really makes mm -hmm. me happy because it's just been a long time coming. Yeah. I have never been able to accomplish work-life balance. Never. That's no. true. <laughs> it's work, work balance. <laughs> and I'm life, life balance. <laughs> so that's how we, that's how we make it happen. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree. I've had, um, I used to work out of my house. I bought a condo to, to set up an office. I've, I've been back and forth for the past 35 years and decided I like working from my house and I have actually no end point. You know, I'll come in here at 11 PM mm -hmm. at night and, and work on stuff. Yeah. That's just how I am. I can never stop. Have you, have I take a shower and I solve problems. Do you guys do yep. that? Yeah. Um, totally. So it's, I'll, I'll, oh, it's me. That's our our best, uh, yes. Our best partner meetings are in the bathroom. That's that I mean, I had common. This, this pad, this pad is, yeah. uh, yeah. In the bathroom, yeah, all the time. Common, yeah. Oh we have, we have built out seating in there so we can sit yeah. and have our uh, yep. our partner meetings. <laughs> That's exactly the truth. I'll I'll make I have my coffee and unless I'm in a big rush to do something, I'll relax and then it's like okay, these things I need to address today. Go take my yeah. shower, mm -hmm. and I'm jumping out of the shower to write notes because I've solved stuff. Oh, right. oh my gosh, uh -huh. yeah, I call those my shower thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm right. There. It's a little embarrassing. We do that too. Yep. Now it's this one will try to have a whole full blown conversation while she's in there. That's true. You know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I just, when you walked away. I just nod my head. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes, yes. You think I can hear you? That's funny. <laughs> That's kind of what he says. Well, Barry, Barry will come in like he um you know, he'll, he'll walk in the office and he knows I just had my shower and I'll just hold up my hand and I'll go brain dump and he'll, he'll, yep. he'll go because mm -hmm. he knows I'm typing out stuff and doing a full mm -hmm. brain dump and I'll just put it together later. But that's like my best thinking time. We had to make rules that we stick by still. True. About, you can't just get up and start talking about work. Right. There's, the other person at least gets a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We always do things like that. And then any, anything after five o'clock has got to be in the schedule because yeah. there's no more talking about work. After it's that. not fair. Because then after three beers, he expects you, me to remember <laughs> things that I don't remember things. <laughs> That's totally true. Yes. Like, we talked about this last night. I'm like, that's not fair. <laughs> oh, I thought it had a different ending. <laughs> I have a bad memory. Anyway, you pour alcohol on that. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah, we, we, um, we don't have too many boundaries. Um, yep. Even when we're riding our motorcycles and taking the break in between um, going out, yep. um, I might bring some stuff that I might be working out. And it, either I get inspired or I don't. I, I just right. don't fight it. But you are correct. Um, sometimes it's good to just not deal with it the rest of the day and enjoy living. And that's, that's yeah. really hard for me. It's true. We used to have a Goldwing and it came with the, you know, the microphones yes. and the headsets and with the helmets. And 
We used that exactly one time. Yep. We both said, you know what? We don't need to talk to each other on a motorcycle. Yeah. We have all kinds of other times we can talk to each other. Exactly. <laughs> Just enjoy the scenery. <laughs> I think that's why Barry hasn't put our communication system in our motorcycles. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a motorcycle park. It's um, 2,700 acres and it's fenced in. So they would send me off until I got to know the park. They'd send me off with a food bar and some water and go, mom will find her way back. <laughs> I have to be completely tacoed, the motorcycle on top of me, burning a hole in my outfit or whatever. And nobody cares. So I'm sitting there with the spiders and the centipedes and the turkeys and whatever. And they'd come looking for me after, but they started dressing me up in bright clothes. Um, and then they started to put the, the GoPro on me because it was funny oh. to see my get looped we have vines in florida so i'd be going along for in third gear and all of a sudden my handlebars would hook a vine Woo! Oh, I go that way i go that way and it'd be reruns oh let's watch mom oh no so no it's fun i roll i i don't have any sharp points i'm round i'd put a i think i'd put a beacon on you i'd have a tracker mm -hmm. on you and then i'd have my drone to find you <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's She's a nice cool. size but i know my way around now pretty much good it works out pretty good but it's it's family entertainment that's awesome so what advice do you have for uh new good. land people or people that are thinking about doing this um first of all you have to embrace the process i think um you're not going to know uh, the entire path it's going to be shrouded in fog just understand what you need to do next um, allow yourself, uh, like processes. Um, I don't care. Now this is just me. So just take it as this is Barb, but I like to have my hands on before I hand off something. I want to understand how it works. Even if you're not good on the phone to me, being on the phone is, is so super important because you find out about the area that you mailed, you find right. out about the people and their feedback and You've got to work to be, uh, you know, 10 phone calls and you're comfortable with it. You're not going right. to be stellar. Like John Maxwell says, um, if you had heard him speak when he first started, you wouldn't be standing up clapping or be inspired. It takes a process to do that. Before I hand my phone off to somebody else, I want to understand what it is that I'm getting in. So I had my first phone calls. I had um, a question list, for instance, uh, of the questions I would ask. And I didn't make a lot of copies of that because it would change like every two, three phone calls. Oh, we need to ask this. Oh, we need to ask this. Oh, now we need to do this. And even now I have an entire process that I put together asking about well, electric, all these different things, but things that we found out during that process that we now incorporate that make things go quicker for us. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing too, is I learned from a guy named Perry Marshall. He does the 80, 20, the Pareto principle. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he talks about your $1,000 and $10,000 an hour time. And for me, the phone, I've saved and created more deals because I've been the one or my husband's been mm -hmm. the one to answer the phone. Not mm -hmm. that a phone service can't do it, but they're not me. And, and right. I've really done a great job ringing out as many sales as I could and had people calling me back. Even um, just last week, we had somebody call back and said, I talked to you. I really liked you because we connected. They weren't ready yeah. to sell, but now they're, they're interested in having a conversation again. They may not have done that if it was a phone service, um, right. but it's that handoff before you hand, um, you know, hands on before you hand off and <laughs> understanding if you have to fix your process, you got to know where to hit the hammer in order to fix the process. And if you've not done it, and that to me is my $10,000 an hour work in a sense of mm -hmm. um, those calls coming in, I'm not sending 10, 20,000 pieces of mail out a month, far less. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it work for me right now. Yeah. That doesn't- You have a good direct, a good direct story about converting a seller that probably wasn't had no intention of selling you property that called you and and you know you converted them yeah That's good. yep have i done that um well i had one guy call me um hey uh at the end of the conversation he says to me i really 
really, I'm, I'm so disappointed in myself because he really wanted to have a, a, a yell at me, but I was so nice and I was yeah. this and I was that and, and, and so forth. And he did call us back eventually Ooh. to uh, offer on his land. We didn't get that, but uh, cause his offer was, you know, what he wanted was um, we couldn't bridge that, but who knows if he doesn't sell it, right. he remembers Barb in our yep. conversation. And so I've gotten yep. that feedback um, from people and it's hilarious. And I have had rude people, um, but they, you know, so what, if that's the worst thing mm -hmm. that's going to happen to you, you know, I, I have a little rhino. Um, you have to develop rhino skin and, and yeah, you get from here to there. You can't live right. in Mamby Pamby land. You can have your little, um, you know, cry in your tissue for a little bit, but then put on the music that's going to uplift you. And I know we were um, near bankruptcy when I started my Avon business. And that song um, kept coming on uh, when I ruled the world. I am famous for not knowing any lyrics to stuff. I just make up my own lyrics because I don't even know what they're yeah. saying. I don't know what the song's about, but all I know is it says, when I rule the world. So every time that came on, that was like my song. I was going to rule the world. And I don't think it has anything to do with it. whatever. But you've got to have a list of uh, quotes and affirmations and things that are going to turn you right around and become invincible, I think. I think that you never know what I get excited because you never know what that um, calls. You never know why they're calling. It could be a buyer calling. It's Willy Wonka. So you can't, it could be the wind. Yeah, you can't, you can't have a bad attitude. Yeah, you're gonna mm -hmm. rip open another chocolate bar. Oh my gosh, the phone's ringing. Who is it? Exactly. So you've got. Exactly. I, I guess um, I, you guys are. I used to tell my friends, you've got to zip on your little rhino suit. You've got to have this yep. this shell. You could be. I don't know. You just burnt dinner or something. The phone rings and you have to change yourself, you know, super. Totally. Yep. My favorite was we had a, a guy working with us for a while. And, and after his first round of calls, he said, well, I can officially take a baseball to the face. <laughs> 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 it, was the best. it was the best thing. It's like after what I just went through today, bring it. <laughs> like, well, now you're in. Now you know. Now you know. big deal. You priced it right. I still come back to if I don't get a bunch of negative stuff in the beginning. Yeah. That makes me worry that we did it wrong. If everybody calls and loves you, you're like, uh oh. Yeah. Go <laughs> overpriced. Exactly. Half of the people that are listening to this or watching this. Thank you to our freaks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I include myself in that group. <laughs> I was real excited about it. I think it's one of those things. If you frame it in a different frame of mind, like it's my $10,000 an hour work. Am I going right. to hand that to someone? Right. That is such, you know, I've said this before on the show. I'll say it again now because I think it's really appropriate. Every business has that moment. In healthcare, it's that bedside moment that you're uh, that you're delivering healthcare to a, a patient. So, and not everybody involved in healthcare. Think of all the administrators and everything. They're just never really involved in that. Mm -hmm. In this business, it's that moment. Those that first maybe fifteen seconds when you pick up the call. So you have to really decide if you want to outsource that. Uh, in fact, Jill is. We're bringing back uh, Jill live. Mm -hmm. We're. Um, she is personally uh, starting next month going to train people locally here in Phoenix. Uh, so we have our own call center. And then when, we, when we've got it all run up and running for us, we're going to release it to the uh, Land Academy mm -hmm. as a Land Academy I member. Think that's benefit. fantastic because it really does mm -hmm. take special knowledge and a certain mm -hmm. mindset. And they're not just sitting there answering the phone and chewing their gum. I'm not that they would do that, right. but you want to have somebody have a certain mindset that at the end of these calls, there needs to be this result type of thing with right. the person. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's so important. And I'm not, you know, somebody needs to hand it off because they're working full time or that kind of thing. That's, you got to do what you can to get your business off the ground. But because yeah. I'm not, and I've got a friend who, um, uh, I'm not going to go to a call center. I'm going to develop this and hand the part off to my friend, because if I'm making mm -hmm. enough money, mm -hmm. I want to pay him enough money to be able to yeah. do this because he's in a situation where he needs that. And 
I feel as though I've been handed this gift. I want to be able to help other people with it. And if that means paying my friend a good wage, and it takes me two or three pieces of land a year to pay him a good wage, and he's helping me answer, why not? Why not? Right. That's what Land Academy is. Exactly. This is That's why we started Land Academy for that exact reason. Uh-huh. You know, not exactly. everything is about the money. It's who you bring along for your trip. And I don't want to mm-hmm. be by myself on my trip. I, You know, mm-hmm. when we get in the motor home and I'm looking for single track and riding around, I want to hang out with my friends. I want them to be able to come yeah. along too. And so mm-hmm. I think that's so important is to surround yourself and, and help other people if you're able to. Mm-hmm. I agree. What a great attitude and great perspective. You know, as I say too, it's so interesting what Barb brings in, what I totally agree with. So much of this is the relationships and no matter how the mail goes out, when they call you back, I'm sure you've done this. There's times you add money. There's times you take away money. There's When you can connect with these people, you can solve so many problems. The rest of your business goes smooth. When you connect with title agents, you connect with mm-hmm. brokers, you connect with your partner, you know, you connect with your banker, whatever it is, you know, everything just goes smoother and I can, I can resolve a lot of, uh, yes, it, I, that, that reminds me, you know, I wanted to negotiate on some of my first deals, but I decided mm-hmm. at the time, you know, is it worth that extra X and how much does it mean right. to that person? And you know what? Right. I've got plenty of years to do this and make up ground. I don't, it's not that important to me to ring out another thousand or whatever. It was more right. important for me to just make them happy. They were so excited and and just keep moving forward. Uh, And I guess it depends on too, how you've priced and what your, your differences, you know, I try to aim for at least 12 uh, to 20,000 on each deal. Uh, So perfect. anyway, that's great. I I, I personally, this is just a personal taste of mine. Do do not like negotiation. You know, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't like ringing, ringing out the last thousand bucks uh, mm-hmm. on a deal at all. Well, you know, there's so much margin in all this. Yes. We don't need to. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd rather do more deals. Now sure. I am from New England and I am the queen <laughs> of negotiating and making offers and things like that. I absolutely, it's a game, but yeah. in this business, kind of. I kind of take the humanity part of, you know, they're already um, yeah. dealing with, I want to say it's, um, uh, like land pawning, right? Um, they mm-hmm. just got this unwanted piece of property. I, you know, when I took my PT cruiser, um, down to CarMax and turned it in, um, my little convertible GT, I really miss it. I needed cash right then and there. I could have easily mm-hmm. sold it and done the whole thing. I just didn't have time. I had bills to pay. Things were coming mm-hmm. due. I needed to get rid of it. Right. It was during that time I was building my Avon business. And it's like, I'll just get, I'll get another convertible yeah. some other time. People are, whether their circumstance and the different things that they're going through, um, you just have to to evaluate what's important to you, what's important to them. And I think if you serve yep. people, you start with serving other people. What is uh, Zig Ziglar? If you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. I think that- that's, that's that. Jill's got that written on yeah. the refrigerator right now, I think. I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> what's on your refrigerator? Um, I yeah. Zig Ziglar is- um, I'm not a big shot. I'm just a little shot that keeps shooting. That's what I feel like because I keep reinventing myself. And it's, you know, I was very apprehensive to come onto the call because I'm, you know, not some superwoman doing all these things. Um, All my lands. It's like, hey, have me come back in a year, you know, to to show. But then I thought the importance of being able to pause and defrag my life and to do these things. Well, that's important too. Um, I think people maybe need to, needed to hear that. So, um, I'm, I was very excited, very excited. So what's I'm the quote? So I, like? I think Chris has a quote that he did. It's, um, uh, if you, how did he put it? If you quit, um, don't quit, uh, something about quitting. And if, if you quit, you lose. So if you don't um, quit, you'll never lose. And that's the whole thing is how fast can you get back up again? You know, you might have had a crap mailer or something like that. It's like, what are you going to learn from that? Mm-hmm. Losing and failing is, you know, you hear this all the time, but it never sinks in for some reason, especially with kids. Yeah. Losing and failing is, is 50% of this. Yeah. 
you can't just win all the time. If you win all the time, you're not trying hard. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you, yeah. you're never going to get out of that comfort zone. You know, here's Barry yeah. was super introverted and quiet and, um, he would, he answers calls and helps customers. He's like the customer whisperer. You don't become that unless you live outside your comfort zone on everything that you're doing. You keep layering on that. From where I started, I mean, gosh, I started an interior design business because my boyfriend said her girl, his, his girlfriend had tools because I used to work on my own car. And so mm -hmm. I started working for some of his designers he worked for. And a couple of years later, I'm doing like, um, Tony Soprano's house, not exactly. Exactly, but kind of. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> no, I think it's, awesome. it's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> 15, you know, 7,000, 15,000 square foot houses. And yeah. I was going to the local school to learn how to do certain things in the interior design field, but I was already in a successful business because, you know, I just knock on the door, show up in my little $300 beaded and embroidered suits and stuff. And then the next day I'm up in their attic in jeans and a t-shirt dragging grandma's bureau out and we're going to redo this. And I'm at the dump picking, you know, that's when they had good stuff at the dump. And my husband always hated it when I pick up the van because I was going to the auction house house and I was picking stuff up on the side of the road and, and redoing it um, and reselling it to stuff. And he never knew what to expect. Oh my gosh, the poor guy I almost came home with a bear rug. Somebody out oh. with me, thank goodness. I'm like, oh my, how am I going to hide this under the bed? So <laughs> on the second call, which was really good. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Barb, for everything you shared today and your insight and I know, I know you are inspiring a lot of people right now. And I do want to take you up on that offer. We are going to reconnect in mm -hmm. I think that would be I mean, fun. a year. Yeah. I want to hear from like, I want to remember, okay, March, 2022, <laughs> right. We're going to do a March, 2023. That'd be really fun. I'm writing this down. I would. And like, can you give us, um, do you have uh, any thoughts about where you think you're going to be in March in 2023? Because I'm pretty sure you're going to be dead on. Executive Senior Vice President of Makeup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, so I, I have several goals. One of them is to have the time to be in the motorhome while we're doing our yeah. business to visit you guys okay. and uh, cool. bring our motorcycles. That is a huge thing. Um, the second thing okay, is... Cool. Um, I've got to figure out the tax stuff, but to be able to build our bank to a million dollars, I want to be able to yeah. have a bank because it's a tool, right? It's money, but it's yeah. a tool. So we, we can uh, do a lot of our own self-funding, which we've been doing up until this point. It's been kind of fun to see that grow. Um, cool. we, we have several things that we've got on paper uh, of what we want to accomplish. And I think all of it is absolutely doable because this business I is, um, I think, for anybody that wants to put uh -huh. the work in and learn, learn how to do it and learn about themselves uh, while mm -hmm. they're doing it so they can improve. Personal growth is, is number one. I'm so glad. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to wrap it up and happy you could join us today. Five days a week, you can find us here on the Land Academy Show. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 